So we know that this disease has been around quite a while, and the reason it's called longer Hans cell histiocytosis is that a very smart medical student named Paul Langerhans in, from Vienna, Austria, was looking at the skin in 1868 with a stain or a, a dye to color the cells in the skin. He was using some gold stain. And he found these cells underneath the surface of the skin which had all these arms on them. And in medical uh, terminology, we call cells with arms dendritic cells. And so they've got these arms floating all, all over the place. And he thought they were part of the nervous system because they looked like cells where the nerves would connect one arm with the other arm and transfer the nerve impulse. Well, he was a little bit wrong there, but that's okay because it was a very early uh, discovery. And about the same time, there were several diseases discovered uh, and discussed which had some similarities but seemed to be quite different. There was a disease called eosinophilic granuloma which was primarily a disease in bones where if you took a biopsy you would find these longer Han cells or histiocytes and you would see eosinophils which are a white blood cell that has some red staining in it and a bunch of other cells but there was primarily in, in the bone and this was uh, discussed in the radiology literature and the orthopedic literature quite a bit. Slightly later, a group of doctors, uh, Hand, Schuler, and Christian, found some children who had a disease in which the eyes seemed to be protruding from the head, popping out, and they had this problem called diabetes insipidus where they were drinking lots of water, and they had these terrible uh, scalp rashes and maybe sometimes some uh, holes in the skull when they took x-rays. So they called it Hand, Schuler, Christian disease. Then there was another disease called letter seaweed, which in, usually uh, included infants who were very young, less than a year of age, who were extremely sick with bad skin rashes, very big bellies because their liver and spleen were much enlarged, and often uh, bone lesions and other problems too. And this was discovered by these two doctors, letter and seaweed, in 1924. So no one really understood these diseases very well until the 1950s when a Dr. Lichtenstein in 1953 said, you know, these are really the same disease because if you look at the, the biopsy specimens, it's the same kind of cells. But they didn't really know what these cells were. They called them histiocytes, but they didn't understand histiocytes very well. So he said, we really ought to lump these diseases together into one group called histiocytosis X. And for many years, and unfortunately still today, you hear this word histiocytosis X thrown about to describe these kind of diseases. And the reason they said X was because they didn't understand the cell of origin. But in 1973, a very uh, elegant uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Nezeloff and his uh, colleague, Francois Bisset, at the Necker Hospital in Paris were using electron microscopy to look at the cells of these uh, biopsies from the histiocytosis patients. And they noticed that by electron microscopy, there were these very interesting granules in the cells, which kind of had five layers. They call them pentalaminar, and some of them had little loops on the end that looked like tennis rackets. And the fascinating thing was that these were the same granules that were in the Langerhans cells of the skin. So doctors Nezeloff and Basset put the thing together, and they really took the X out of histiocytosis X by saying these are Langerhans histiocytes. They're not some X cell, but we know what they are. And today, we use other means of identifying these Langerhans cells. We have some chemical stains which will stick to certain characteristics on the outside of the cells. And one of these we call a CD1A stain, and there's a CD207 stain. And the CD207 is actually the protein that uh, is in the Langerhans uh, Burbeck granule that was discovered by electron microscopy. So today we occasionally do the electron microscopy, but more often the staining, which just stains a brown color on the surface of the cells. And although we can look at the cell without the staining and say it looks like a histocyte, love the Langerhans histocyte, we like to confirm the diagnosis by using the CD1A and especially the CD207. Well, if you look at the normal skin, between the two layers, uh, there's an outer layer where we feel our skin, and then there's an inner layer. 
called the uh, dermis. So the outer layer is the epidermis, the inner layer is the dermis. And in between those two layers is where these Langerhans cells are hiding. And they're hiding there because they're kind of the distant early warning uh, system for our immune system. And those cells hiding uh, occasionally uh, underneath the skin have some certain characteristics which keep them there. They've got a surface protein called E. cadherin and they also express that CD207 and that CD1A. And they're just sitting there in the skin until uh, something comes along to stimulate them. And in, in this uh, little immunohistochemical stain, at uh, these little red dots here, just occasionally seen along the surface of the inner surface of the skin, are these CD1A cells, or actually CD207 cells, which are distributed intermittently along the surface uh, of the skin. So when these cells are sitting there and they are then exposed to a danger signal, which could be a, an infection, could be a vaccination, or could be the uh, presence of some abnormal cell like a cancer cell, then the immune system gets activated and it recognizes it must do something to defend against that uh, abnormal danger signal. And with some of those growth factors I talked about earlier, like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 beta, this cell that started in the skin picks up the danger signal and carries it to the lymph node. And when it gets to the lymph node, it has a different surface characteristic on it called CCR7. It had CCR6 when it was back here in the, in the skin. So these mobile cells, Langerhans cells, go from the skin to the lymph node and in the lymph node, they have a little connection with some lymphocytes with some special surface um, proteins called CD40 and, and the MCH2, which is uh, a very important part of the immune system. And they kind of dock, like the space station docks, with uh, this T lymphocyte and therefore communicate that there is something that has stimulated the immune system and that the T cell has to get activated and produce something to de deal with this danger. Well, that's all well and good for the normal immune system, but what's gone wrong in Langerhans cell histiocytosis? These cells have gotten some signals from someplace, and that is that someplace we don't know, and they've already started to be activated. So they have this CD40 characteristic on them. They have the T cells next to them have the CD40 ligand, so there's already some communication between these cells, but yet they're still really immature. They, they're round, they don't have some of the surface characteristics of the mature cells, and they don't really act the normal way the immune system should. And this is one of the big mysteries about the disease, how you can have something that's half activated but still immature and really not able to do its job, but yet it's growing in ways that it collects in different parts of the body and causes the disease.